Good morning and happy Friday to you. This is uh, Jeff Copperthay from eSims Engineering and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an eccentric cam at the same time, how to make that eccentric cam and make it parametrically. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick that will allow you to um, basically allow you to update the nominal diameter with just a couple of seconds and a couple of clicks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I've already started a new part, new IPT file, and I'm going to create a sketch. And the eccentric cam is really easy to do uh, modeling wise, but getting the dimensions to work out so that you can do it parametrically is what's going to be uh, a little bit trickier. So remember, parametric modeling means that we can allow for one or two dimensions to be dependent on other dimensions, or we really could you know, make the entire part dependent on one dimension, and that's kind of the ideal case here because we, if we just make it so that we update the nominal diameter of the cam, we can then change the size without having to worry about going in and changing other dimensions to with it. So what I'm gonna do, the way I do this, is I basically create uh, a, a vertical line. And you're thinking, why vertical line? Well, this is gonna be my D0, my first dimension, okay? So I'm going to make this, and let's say I want to start off with two as my uh, as my sort of D0, my nominal diameter cam, right? So there's my line is out there. And I've done that, and now I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna make my cam, all right? So since I'm making the eccentric cam, I'm gonna be using the circle tool to do that. And I'm just gonna create this over here, right? And then I'm gonna press okay, and there's my circle. Now when I go to dimension this, I want this dimension to be equal to the first dimension, which since I put that in, that get, is given the label D0. So if I make this dimension, this first, the second dimension here, which is called D1, if I make it dependent on D0, it will use whatever the value I have in for that. So if I went over to this dimension and I updated this to be three instead, you'll see that the circle will change also, right? So it's very similar to Microsoft Excel. Now you might be wondering, well, how am I gonna know what dimensions are what labels without having to click them? So you notice how if I double click this to edit it or click it once, uh, it'll show me that this label is D0, right? If I click this, it'll show me this label is D1, which of course is equal to D0. But there's a more convenient view available to you. If you go to the manage ribbon and click the parameters button, you will see these dimensions will, will basically like a live list of the dimensions. So we have the, na the labels, excuse me, and then we have the equations that create them, which of course could be constant values, and probably up to this point you've probably been using constant values, but we also can type in what other dimensions we can make them depend on. So this one here, this dimension here is consumed in sketch one, and it's D0. Also, by the way, that also tells us if we highlight over, it'll tell us what sketch or what part uh, or what solid feature is using that dimension. Okay, so anyway, let's just go ahead and do that. Now we leave that there, and we have this dimension in here. There's one other thing we have to do in this part, and that's to put the center of the cam. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into the point tool, and I'm gonna basically put a point down here. I wanna in line with the center. You see how I get that dash line right there to indicate that it's in line, right? And I can always go back later and constrain that if I have to, right? Well, according to the drawing, which I don't think I put up here, let me... Oh, I have it in a different tab, sorry. No, nope, that's my Google Classroom for my students. Okay, there it is. So this is, these are the drawings that are available to you on assignment 4.5, and they basically are showing you the designs of the cams, but the parametrically design uh, given of the cams, right? So you'll see here for the eccentric cam, we have the nominal dimension, nominal diameter, excuse me, as the diameter of the entire circle, but then the distance from the center to this is one quarter of the diameter. Right, so if I go into here and I dimension from the center of the circle to the point that I just put on here, and then I put in one fourth of D0, I can either do D, D0 divided by four, or of course I can also just do one fourth in parentheses times D0 as well, right? So all of those are all options that I can type in. Basically, I'm making the dimension dependent on D0, right? So it will give me, did I type in? Yeah, okay, this is three, right? So you'll notice how since I typed in one fourth or D0 divided by four and D0 is equal to three, that makes this dimension 0.75. And then it's telling you, this FX symbol is telling you that this dimension is a function of something else, right? So it means it's dependent on a different dimension. Again, if I change this dimension, right? So if I go in here and I, so again, you'll see that this dimension is now changing <coughs> on here. So if I double click that, right? It changes and updates appropriately. Right, and later that's I'm going to be making a hole through this, and I'll actually use the hole tool, uh, new feature that you may not know about as well. So okay, 
So we finished the sketch, this is done, and notice really not a whole lot to dimension on here, right? Just the, where the location of the hole is going to be and the overall dimension, and that's good to go. So we finished that up, all right? And then I'm going to make an extrusion, and on, in our class we're doing uh, eighth, inch, eighth inch thick for now. We also could go quarter inch. Um, we'll do quarter inch, just for quarter inch, okay. So we've done that, and now you think, okay, well we have a circle, right? What happened to the point? Where's the hole going to go? Remember that we can reuse a sketch if we right click and then share the sketch on the browser bar. And that will allow us to see that sketch that we just used to create that. And then we can come back here. And the way I extruded it is I used the direction that, go, that went forward. So here's my point. And what I'm going to now do is I'm going to make a hole here. I'm going to use the hole tool to do that. The hole tool is available under the modify. And since that is already sort of selected for me, but if I wanted to, I could also uh, select the point. Oops. I could also select the point by clicking here. I can select centers, right? And that's given to me already. So this is already kind of, it's, it's already selected for me, so I don't have to worry about clicking it again. But if I, if I wasn't selected, I can go to centers, and I can go to the point, and I can just click the point, right? Now, the first and default type of hole is one that goes all the way through, and is basically just a straight up drilled hole, right? A tapped hole. So uh, with in this case, no bottom. The diameter of the hole is given here, and the diameter that we want to use from our drawing is 3 16 of an inch. So if I just type in here 3 over 16, and then press OK, you'll notice here that the cam now has a hole in it, right? And we keep the hole the same size because we want the shaft, the cam shaft, to not have to change parametrically as well. So again, if I go in and I go back to my manage parameters window, you see I have more things in here right now. See, I've got a dimension D4, which is consumed by extrusion 1. I've got D5 consumed by hole 1. So there's more dimensions in here. And not all of them are parametrically dependent on D0. But again, here's D0, and it's 3. If I go in and just type in 2, the cam will update appropriately. But notice the hole does not change size. In Activity 4.5, you're working with four different uh, nominal diameters, 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3. So you can type all of those into here, and you can basically get the same size cam. All right, so that's, that kind of covers up how to do the parametric modeling. And one more thing you can do is when you're done with this and you like the cam that you have, you can always go back into the sketch one and right click and uncheck visibility. And we can turn that sketch off and now just be left with just the regular straight up cam. Okay, so anyway, back to what I was just about to say. So these cams are going to be used in a test assembly, and we're going to be working on that when we get to the second part, but your teacher obviously wants you to model these cams. Uh, and there's three other cams that you can be designing. Uh, please check my colleague, Mr. Shianti, uh, his snail cam video, which we posted last week, is how to design that uh, part for this same assignment. And there's also a hex and pair cam that you can design for this assignment. So thank you for watching. I hope that this helped you learn a little bit about parametric modeling, and I hope that it also helped you uh, with how to interpret sketches and do that parametric modeling and some cool things that you can do with Autodesk. Uh, thanks for watching as always and good luck with your IED class and don't forget please like and subscribe to eSims Engineering and thanks for your support. We have a wonderful, I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.